Hey, this is Matt Winning at winningstrength.com, and we're talking about some more stories today. The next story that we have is a Westside Barbell story. Um, it, it actually converts over into just him and me at a different facility called Lexon here in town. Um, we're talking about the infamous Chuck Vogelpool. Now, for those of you that don't know or are kind of new to the game, Chuck Vogelpool broke multiple world records in the squat. It was probably one of the most intensive lifters to ever walk the planet. Now, if you don't believe me, watch a couple of these clips that we're going to be showing while we're talking. So a couple of stories on Chuck. The first time I met Chuck, Westside Barbell was in a small 750 square foot little junk like strip mall. The, the windows were painted black. You didn't want to use the restroom because one, it smelled, two, it was dirty. Dumbbells all over the floor, chalk everywhere, blood on the walls, and I'm not shitting you, this place was all work. But the magic that came out of that original Westside Barbell was crazy, and I was fortunate enough to see that as a teenager in my early 20s. Westside moved to a different facility about 2003. I was driving from Indiana. So the first time I meet Chuck, Chuck's introduced to me as the lifter that they have that's about 185 pounds and can pull 800 sumo or conventional, and which was crazy because most people either have one discipline or another discipline that they're good at. This guy could pull multiple ways really, really good. His back strength was uncanny for his size. But as he became better and better at lifting, he became a better, better known squatter. Um, he was the lightest man to break the 1,000-pound barrier at 220, back in, I want to say, 92 range. Um, and by 1999, 2000, when I was coming around, he was a full-built jack, 250, 260. Um, and then that's when the, the decimation of world records came. Um, I think at his prime, he squatted somewhere around 1,170 pounds at 275, 265 body weight, and had abs. Um, so you're talking about a man that just literally was the epitome of hardcore. Now, he did all of this after becoming completely neck broken by a guy named Matt Dimmel. Now, Matt Dimmel was the first man to squat 1,000 pounds from Westside Barbell. Him and Chuck Vogelpool and Matt Dimmel get into an altercation out in the parking lot in front of the gym. Matt Dimmel body slams Chuck and breaks his neck. Um, when that happens, the fusion process started in the spine, and if you ever talk to Chuck or ever talk to him, you notice he can't turn his neck. Um, a lot of that's because he doesn't have a, really a neck that accreliates anymore. Now, long-term damage, as that started to create damage even lower, and by the time we were done with our, he was done with his lifting career, and I was towards the end and peak of my career, he had two rods in his back. He had to get his whole back fused. Um, but talking about a man that was just probably one of the most intense persons you ever had. The last few years of his life, his back was so bad, they literally had to duct tape his ribs so they wouldn't pop out of his spine. Um, and he was still squatting all-time world records. This is the type of intensity. And the reason I bring this stuff up, not to brag on how hardcore he was, it really let me know the intensity level that I needed to go to break world records. So when Chuck and I trained for six to eight years together, um, my squat was at its peak. I was squatting 1,200 pounds. I was uh, the only guy from Westside to be that close or right at 1,200 at that time. Um, my technique was immensely emulated by Chuck Vogelpool's technique. Um, Chuck Vogelpool didn't have the body size to squat those kind of weights. He had the leverage and the technical and the intensity to be able to do those types of things. So I emulated what he had. Because being at six foot one, I didn't have the leverages like Ed Cohen to be able to squat those kind of weights. So I had to do it with perfection. And I learned that from Chuck. And Chuck's technical mastery of the squat was second to none. And that's why it's it's difficult. You know, this goes into a different parameter, but it still revolves much much around Chuck. Of people that argue about how they can't squat like myself or Greg Panora or Chuck Vogelpool. And I'm naming world record squatters because they're not built that way or they don't have that structure. We were all built differently. Chuck was 5'6", five, 5'7", five, if he was lucky. Greg was maybe 5'8", five, 5'9". Five, I was six foot one, And if you watched all of the squat, all of our squats looked really, really similar. Very straight shins, very upright torso, pushed out knees. Now, the point of that being is that I think that technical ability in the squat is not so much based on your biomechanics. Now, that some of that has some things to do with it. It's based on your patience level, meaning that if you want to squat with what we consider perfect form, you need to have those muscles perfectly balanced. Well... If you have really strong quads and weak hamstrings, it's really hard to sit back and do a squat. How long does that take to change? Could be three to five years. So the point is, is that 
when you came into Chuck's wheelhouse, you knew you were the weaker guy compared to him, but you knew that the way to get to where he was was following his technical mastery. And I love his ability of coaching. His ability of coaching was you watch what I do and you mirror what I do. It wasn't, you know, a lot of coaching cues. It was followed by doing. And I think that is missed a lot in our profession. We have a lot of strength coaches, both at the high school, the college, and the pro level. We have a lot of powerlifting coaches and online coaches that don't live what they talk about, and that gives them a distinct disadvantage to people that push, train, and have a long-term thought process. Um, you know, going back to the Ed Cohen thing is that Ed Cohen would tell me that if I could hold on for 10 more years, I'd be a world record squatter when I was a teenager. Most people would use that as a detriment and be like, man, I can't wait 10 years. That's crazy. I just love to train. And with you or truck, you had to love to bleed. And what that meant was is that every workout was hardcore. Every workout was hard. Every workout was excruciating. Every workout, somebody's nose or eyes were bleeding. I mean, you're talking the amount of intensity that were in our groups. I believe by the time Chuck and I had created the ultimate squat group that I don't think will ever be matched, um, the average squat in the group of the six guys was 1,025. That meant that on average, every guy in that could squat at least 1,000 pounds, and most of the guys were closer to 1,100. Think about that for a second. Totally insane. And this was back in the time when the gear wasn't even, we didn't even know how to use it. We were just training so intensively, so hard, and so smart that we created massive amounts of world records. Chuck fought, Chuck Vogelpool, Matt Winning, Greg Panora, Vlad Hazelhoff also trained with us, which has world records in knee wrap squats and had the all time world record in, in gear at 1250. All of us trained together, and it was a special time in all of our career. But the real main leader of that push point was Chuck Vogelpool, his technique and his veracity and his guidance on how and what it was going to take to hit those world records.